Hello, I'm Julia. I'm your driver. It was the Jesuits that famously said, give me that child until he's seven and I will give you the man. Over the next five weeks, I'll be hitting the road. Does this car now look like a meat-filled Jaffa? Taking some of my favourite funny people back to their childhoods. Should we go and have a look oh, in the classroom? Scary, scary. So many of my memories were, were made here. To uncover the forces that shaped them. I was away from home and I, I hated it. Now, do you mind coming on this little adventure with us? If I get to talk about myself, <laughs> who doesn't like to talk about themselves? <laughs> What about the sound of that? It's gorgeous. Isn't that great? Yes. Is it That's... throbbing? <laughs> People have this impression that, like, I grew up in, like, Fiddler on the Roof land. But I grew up in, uh, like, in North Bourne. There's hardly any bagels there whatsoever. Now, people know you as a comic actress, but indeed, that's not necessarily how you expected that would come out. No, I just wanted to be an actress. Mm. And because I never went to NIDA, I didn't have the piece of paper, mm. and I always felt um, a, a bit of a fake. Mm. But I'm over that now, and I think that's one of the good things about being older. And I've realised that the only way you can cope with that is to just work your ass off. Are you game to go this way, to the right? Sure. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Donna. Very much. Donna. Thank you. Donna. <laughs> Donna. Okay. Now we're in Albion Street now. We now, are which in one's Street. your house? It's it's this one up here. Alan, that's a really big, beautiful house. It is. When was the last time you were here? 20 years ago. Great. My family home and my mum and my stepfather, David, are still in it. <gasps> so that's it oh, there. That's great. I mean, our original coast homes, all that Fibro. This is um, VIP. <laughs> oh. Yeah, nice. <laughs> VIP. <laughs> What's exciting? The fact that there's... Well, this is still exactly the same. Oh, Let's just have a little sit and listen to this house. Let's have a little listen. You think everything about you is so important. And it's not that it isn't. It's just that... ..things just keep on going. I think that happens, you start thinking those things too as you get older. There is now a limited time left, but all of a sudden you think, yeah, I have a special place in the world, and then you go, oh, well, actually, other people live here now, things do move on, it just keeps going. How did you deal with religion as a kid? The one thing I really remember was being really young, and I think it was like a Sunday school influence thing. We'd learnt that God created the world, and I'd be thinking, what happened the day before that day? <laughs> And then I was like, oh, OK, God had parents. And so they go, but, oh, my God, but then how did they get there? And it just would totally mess up my head, this whole thing of, like, what happened the day before day one. Now, this is the backyard. What are the feelings you get when you stand here? The time that I, all well, the times, I should say, that I most reflect is when my kids come out and start running around the back garden. Just realising that they're running on the same soil that I used to run on as a kid when I was their size. I do quite often sit there and, you know, you almost, you know, it's that moment when you go, God, I could almost cry out looking at this, mm, you know. Mm. But let's go for a walk. We're going yes. to find your primary school and just take a bit of a wander through Stanmore. That'd be good. We all knew there was something strange going on in that house. In this one here? Yes, that one. But why did this house look more ominous than any other house? It was the behaviour of the man who lived there. It was my first kiss and she knows who she is. We just sort of walked towards each other, just stuck our lips out. As soon as our lips touched, I mean, just... We both turned around and just bolted 100 miles the other way. That was the first kiss. Wow. It wasn't deep or anything like that. Running, but like running away. Ran. Did you talk about it later? No. It's been like that ever since. <laughs> Trying to kiss a girl, I run. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you're just the guy you are now is the kid you were then? That in fact... In a way. Yeah. People say, aren't you afraid to go on such? No, I've never been afraid. It's, it's an exhilarating mm. feeling. But I also tell people, I'm not full of confidence. Mm. So you've got to be really confident to go on stage. No, you don't. 
you just got to believe in whatever you've got is okay to do. And you realise as you start to do it that all that weird stuff that you grew up with, being unsure of yourself, turns into comedy. Dad, dad, dad. <laughs> hey, mate. Good, mate. Good. Yourself? You're great. I'll show you something we don't often show people. <laughs> I'll show you what Dad did for me. Here you go. It's the first time I've done this on national that's television. Right, yeah. There you go. See that? What do you mean? Well, that's, look at that. That's, yeah. that's what happens when your father whacks you in the nose enough. Tell them a couple of times to keep their hands up, and if they don't, well... well there's only one way to really right. teach someone, and that's to whack them in the face. Wow. Yeah, it's tough love. I'll say. <laughs> excellent parenting technique. <laughs> oh, Jesus. My apologies. <laughs> Dr Poo. Dr Poo. Good morning, Dr. Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> His wife bans the phone. The kids at school, you know. What does your dad do? He's his own business called Dr. Pooh. So when you were at home on the weekends in North Baldwin, there was this tram, the 48 tram. Yes. And you used to catch it as a bit of an escape, as a bit of a let's get out to that world and discover. Where would you go? Oh, I'd go to the city mainly. Bookshops and also record shops. Alone? Yeah, alone. True crime. True crime. Is that exciting? Did you ever think you'd write a true crime book? No, no, no. But it's it's like it, I feel like boy, I've got credibility now. I'm a respectable member of society. You've always had credibility. But, but you know what I mean, like a grown-up book. Here we are at Stanmore Public School. Does it look the same? Yes, it looks exactly the same. Thank you. Yes, see. Oh, I can smell it. You can smell it. Oh, God. But here, well, you got excited about drawing. Draw and paint or write stories. Loved writing stories and gave myself the character roles. Why the character and not the lead? Uh, I never wanted to be the pretty one in, in a show. I always wanted to be the one with the jokes. Boarding school was a very hard place to be for a number of years. Mm. And hey, let's go down that hideous memory lane, shall we? Shall we? Oh, but here it is here, yeah. I think it's pretty clear where we are. So we're Sid going. Douglas, how are you feeling? Ah, oh, it's, it's way too much now. No, after all the things today, yeah. like, on its own, it would be OK. Yeah, but, but it's no, just... No, no, it's just fucking totally freaking me out. Fuck me. I'll get your coat. Get your coat, yeah. So it's very odd to be here. It is very odd to be here. It's been a long time. I was probably a bit kooky. Not, but I mean, everyone's kooky when they're young. You're right. Most kids are kooky. Some kids have the good sense to blend in. OK. I was, you know, I don't think I had much sense. Why did you not want to blend in? Because I hated it. Yeah. And I didn't want to be like any of the fuckwits and idiots that went here. Mm. Well, they also found a little enrolment form. Oh, my God. What have you got all this? We undertake that Shane Jacobson will faithfully obey all the rules of the school. Well, fat chance of that. Wow. And do all the work required of him, including home study. Did you do that? Surely he didn't. Look at my signature back then. It's not a signature. I look like, it looks like some drunk monkey has got to a pen. <laughs> and the photo, I look like a drunk monkey. Look at that. That's amazing. I'm afraid I've ruined your show for you because... Yes, uh... tell us why. We can't get in. Last time I was here, I was shooting my show, Music Jamboree. So it was all about how in the movie Footloose... Yes. ..they weren't allowed to dance because Dancing's of the Bible. banned because of the Bible. And then we had no school dances. And, you know, the Bible says men and women shouldn't mix or whatever. So therefore, I go back on school grounds and cut Footloose. So what do you call what you do, John? Storyteller. You know, like, when I decided like to get on a plane and go to Mississippi. Like this situation has worked out that I'm gonna get to go over there and I can write a true crime book. And I was just like, it was as excited as when I was trying to like write a skit, you know, for the for the for the, the school play thing on stuff. We've taken you to your childhood home, to your primary school, your high school. And even just coming in there and that was quite affecting. Yeah. Thank you. It's been very interesting. I'm absolutely full <laughs> of stuff from a long, long time ago. Well, you know, they say the old adage, Nolene, is that uh, never meet your idols because you might be disappointed. Oh. 
I've met one of my idols. I'm genuinely so delighted and it's been so good to spend the day with you. And oh, it's my pleasure, dear one. We've got Stanmore Station right behind us. We might just get on a train and go on one of your dad's mystery trips. Oh, that'd be nice. Where should we go? Mm -hmm. Jack Adrie. Okay, <laughs> let's go.